Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Star Trek, the 25th anniversary, episode 3, which is entitled Love Labours Jeopardized. Now, I went with the episodic view of this by releasing a video every week to make it more akin to a Star Trek episode that we would have known from our youth. That's for our older gaming generation, anyway. Each one of these point-and-click adventures takes the role of a Star Trek episode, where Kirk, McCoy, Spock, Uhura, Sulu and Chekhov, not forgetting Scotty, right, go off and solve a problem somewhere in the Star Trek galaxy. Now, like I say, you take on the role of James T. Kirk and you also control the effects of your landing party, which always consists of Bones McCoy, played by DeForest Kelly, Leonard Nimoy, who plays Spock, and of course, William Shatner, who is Captain Kirk and needs no real introduction. You do get a little bit of space combat as well in some of these games, and also you have the Romulans showing up, you have Klingons showing up, you have Elassi pirates, you have combat against other Star Trek vessels, but there is through the entire adventure game, this point and click adventure game, you do get a level of continuity. It might not seem like, but there is. And it all does conclude in episode seven of this series, which would be called Vengeance. So I'm gonna release these every Friday. Keep an eye out for them. Um, I hope you like this one. As before, I'm not gonna wrap it all the way through it. What I'm gonna be doing, quite honestly, is just doing my thing. I'm just gonna introduce it. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the game. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna play it. And because it's all voice acted by the Star Trek characters, we're gonna let the game play itself and enjoy a bit of retro Star Trek from 1991 and 1992. I say that because the game was originally released on disc. That's right, everybody. Floppy disc. Uh, and then the enhanced CD-ROM edition came out, which indeed had all the voice acting on it as well. Well, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Speak to you soon. And look out for another episode next Friday. Ricardo out. Priority message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. A raid across the Romulan neutral zone has placed Starfleet Research Station Arc 7 in jeopardy. Proceed immediately to Arc 7 and determine the status of the station. Good luck, Jim. We have arrived at Arc 7. Romulan ship decloaking, Captain. Message from the Romulan ship, sir. Treachery! We are aware of Federation plans. Prepare to die. They're arming weapons, Captain. Raising shields. Arming weapons. Captain, there is an auto beacon broadcasting from the station. Warning, warning. As per UFP regulation 342-188564.3, paragraph 3, this base is currently under a class 3 biohazard alert. All personnel are ordered to stay away from this base unless they are part of a biohazard response team. <laughs> Message from Arc 7, sir. I am Centurion Ardea Preax of the Romulan Empire. We have discovered your genocide factory here and have summoned help to destroy it. Our lives will not be sacrificed in vain.
Captain, sensors indicate a breathable atmosphere in the space station. It seems that whatever Art 7's intentions, it managed to create a biohazard that is deadly to Romulans. Seventeen humans and ten Romulans are on the station. The humans are all in perfect health, so it seems we can beam over without any fear of contamination. Arc 7, a highly sophisticated arcology project looking into the origins of life in the universe. The project is being led by Dr. Carol Marcus, who, along with a crew of 17 members, is dedicated to unlocking the mystery of life. Further information is classified. Romulans, a race descended from Vulcan stock, but one that did not reject aggression as the Vulcans did. On a sensor, the two races appear very similar. Their individuals are known for being more passionate and emotional than their Vulcan counterparts. They currently use shapes of Klingon design, suggesting to some the Klingons are maintaining them as a client state to antagonize the Federation in a move that circumvents the Organian peace treaty. Marcus, Carol, the current chief of research on Station Arc 7. Carol Marcus is an expert in molecular biology bioprotein development, cell mutation science, and radiation science. Dr. Marcus has been offered many posts in the Federation, but refuses to be involved in any project which may have a direct military application. Lauren Shields, Captain. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. This computer terminal is linked into the station's main computer. It is currently running an open file of log programs. A Romulan bird of prey hovers menacingly on the view screen. Dr. Marcus Long. Supplemental. Continued testing of the Ouroboros virus confirms its potential harmful effects on Romulan Vulcan humanoids. As soon as the spill has been cleaned up, we will sterilize both labs and purge the circulation system to make sure no traces of the virus will remain viable. Then all research files must be erased. We must leave no chance that this terrible accident will ever be repeated. Doctor, you may be interested in the medical data file appended to the log. Now that's interesting. There's more here. All of Dr. Marcus' research data on the Ouroboros virus. Let me see. Virus growth patterns. Pneumonococcal mimic affecting Romula Vulcan genotype. Alveoli involvement in... Boy, Jim, this bug works fast. Is this really the time to catch up on your reading, Doctor? Now listen here, you pointy-eared... Gentlemen, I think we have more pressing problems. Jim, there is an appended medical database online. Also, it would be useful for me to experiment on how the virus grows in the presence of different gases. I'm sure the station has the necessary equipment. Please select subject file. Ouroboros virus. Ouroboros virus. Atypical growth patterns for L-type virus. Opportunistic pneumococcal mimic affecting Romulo Vulcan genotype. Etiology. Contact or airborne vector with alveoli microcollapse. Involvement immediately upon exposure. Tissue dehydration follows pneumal flooding. Mortality 0.6 in 1.0 stardates. 1.0 within 2.0 stardates treatment none. Named for the mythic world snake that swallows its own tail. Please select subject file. Ouroboros virus. TLTDH gas. TLTDH gas. The chemical compound. Tantalum, bilithium, thallo, dihydroxide. Colorless, odorless, non flammable. Gaseous at 1 atm and temperatures within the human norm. Early anesthetic among Vulcans and Romulans. 
in whom it produces laughter, feelings of exhilaration, euphoria, sometimes leading to unconsciousness. In post-industrial pre-space flight era, a social problem evolved when crude TLTDH became popular to cook up from non-conductive tantalithial compounds commonly used as electrical insulation. Please select subject file. Ouroboros virus, TL nitrous oxide, nitrous oxide, a colorless non-flammable compound, N2O, gaseous at 1 atm, and temperatures within the human norm, early anesthetic among humans, in whom it produces laughter, feelings of exhilaration, euphoria, sometimes leading to unconsciousness. Please select subject file. Ouroboros virus T nitrous ammonia ammonia a colorless pungent compound NH3 a common byproduct of metabolism in carbon-based life forms liquid or gaseous at 1 atm compounds widely used in agricultural medical and industrial applications please select subject file Ouroboros virus exit dihydrogen oxide Dihydrogen oxide, a colorless, tasteless, non-flammable compound, H2O. Water, liquid, solid, or gaseous at 1 atm. Temperature scales defined in most humanoid cultures by state shift of pure water. Please select subject file, Ouroboros by exit, database. An RDAC-1000, the last word in molecular replication, one of the most advanced pieces of scientific equipment ever constructed. It would take us several hours to get this machine working, Captain. I do not believe we will need it. The synthesis chamber should be able to give us what we need. This is the door to the synthesis chamber. In principle, Captain, this device is quite simple. When this chamber is empty and gas tanks are attached, it will combine the gases to make new compounds. If chemicals are placed in the chamber, the machine will combine them with the gases to create new materials. Next, he'll tell us the DNA molecule is simple. Compared to many molecular models, it is, Doctor. I rest my case. This is a synthesizer used to combine and replicate chemicals and form new compounds. This particular model has twin gas feeds. This is a storage cabinet. You take the anti-grav unit. This is a distillator used to isolate specific compounds from raw material. This chamber is where virus samples are placed. This nozzle is where anti-agents are placed. This is a large refrigeration unit. Residue of a viral agent is still within the chamber. Nothing to report, Captain. A Crygelian tube basic compound distillator. Excellent piece of equipment for reducing complex materials to their basic compounds. There are multiple culture samples of the virus within the freezer, Captain. You take the Ouroboros virus culture. Watch out, sir. It looks like the Romulans have taken control of the lower decks. It's a standard adjustable metric socket wrench. This is a service access panel permitting used up or worn materials to be replaced.
turbines of a Cochrane 500 class fusion drive, manufactured over a century ago on Alpha Centauri. I didn't realize that they use these old fusion reactors anymore. Actually, Doctor, as Mr. Scott would tell you, the Cochrane 500 is renowned for its reliability and perfectly suited for a station of this size. Hey, this thing's real old, isn't it? This is the engineering center for the Arc-7 space station. This is an engineering access panel allowing repairs to be made to the interior wiring in the equipment. You pick up a large wrench. The panel opens. You see a gas tank labeled N2 with its feed lines running deeper into the wall. The tank detaches easily. I guess this made it easier to replace the tank every so often, eh, Captain? You attach the anti-grav unit to the gas tank. It can be moved freely. It sure beats hauling it around on our back, sir. The panel is open. You see vast quantities of dust and stripped insulation from wiring repairs made to the console in the past. You grab a handful of insulation. <laughs> you distill the quantity of polybaryl carbonate. Gas feed is on. The machine synthesizes a liter of pure water. A clean drink of water, but I don't see its application in the context of our difficulties, Captain. There's nothing there requiring a ship's doctor. There's nothing there requiring a ship's doctor. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report, Captain. You take a one liter container of pure water. This container contains polybaryl carbonate produced from insulation. <coughs> The machine synthesizes one liter of TLTDH gas. An unusual compound, Captain. It can induce laughter and feelings of exhilaration in some, much the way nitrous oxide affects humans. It doesn't affect Vulcans, of course. Actually, Doctor, both Romulans and Vulcans suffer its effects. Why, that's just dandy. Vulcan laughing gas. Please, Doctor, this is not a laughing matter. You take a one liter container of TLTDH gas. Gas feed is off. Nothing happens. You attach the anti-grav unit to the gas tank. It can be moved freely.
You install the gas tank to the synthesizer's feed lines. Gas feed is on. The machine synthesizes a quantity of colorless goo. You're wrong, Spock. Look, the virus culture has been eliminated. That's why it's clear. It'd be more useful for me to see how the virus might grow in the presence of a limited quantity of ammonia gas. The machine synthesizes a liter of ammonia. I hope you don't want me to swab the deck with that, Captain. I think we can set this aside and not worry about it. You take a one liter container of ammonia. You take the Ouroboros virus culture. Eureka, this is it, Jim. There's not much, but all I need to do is synthesize some more, and we're in business. This device is used for the rapid reproduction of virus cultures in the presence of suspected anti-agents. Residue of a viral agent is still within the chamber. You retrieve the Ouroboros cure sample. You take the hypo with Ouroboros toxin cure. There, you're now cured. Thank you, doctor. Finally, a human response. I don't suppose you'd enjoy the psychological release of a few good belly laughs, Spock. We could open the canister right here, if you like. I would strongly recommend against it, Doctor. The vent is now open. It leads to the lower deck. <laughs> With a hiss, the Romulan laughing gas billows down the vent. You hear the muffled sounds through the vent of hearty Romulan laughter, followed by the dull thud of bodies hitting the deck. These Romulans are totally out of it. This is the Ark-7's crew quarters. There are only Romulans here.
These Romulans are totally out of it. Nothing to report, Captain. Jim, we've got to help these men before they die. The Romulans stir weakly, then begin to get up. They've all been cured. They're severely dehydrated, but they'll live. We got to them in time. The Romulans drink thirstily and empty the container. Take it easy now. You'll feel better in a few minutes. Good thing we had the water available, Jim. We aren't barbarians, in spite of what some people think. This door leads into another section of the base. Done. Gas feed is off. You attach the anti-grav unit to the gas tank. It can be moved freely. You install the gas tank to the synthesizer's feed lines. Gas feed is on. The machine synthesizes a liter of pure water. A clean drink of water, but I don't see its application in the context of our difficulties, Captain. You take a one liter container of pure water. An odd-looking device, almost like a 20th century torpedo fitted with an experimental gear. My god, that's some kind of weapon. Everyone on this project is an avowed pacifist, Doctor, myself included. We do not make weapons. Dr. Carol Marcus, head of this station's research team. How about someone giving us a hand? Dr. Anthony Cheever, Marcus's assistant. He has been bound by the Romulans. Hey, does anyone in Starfleet know how to untie a knot? I do. You just pull on the ropes until they're untied. I don't care who does it, but could somebody get around to doing it on this star date? This Romulan commander is unconscious. The Romulan Preax stirs weakly, then begins to get up. He has been cured. He's severely dehydrated, but he'll live. The Romulan Preax drinks thirstily and empties the container. Take it easy now. You'll feel better in a few minutes. Good thing we had the water available, Jim. We aren't barbarians, in spite of what some might think. Fascinating. This device contains over 10 million forms of life. Patterns I have never seen before. We call this the Cradle, Mr. Spock. One day I hope something wonderful would be produced here. They've been through a good deal of stress, but they're already starting to recover. Their heart rate is dropping and their blood pressure is also dropping.
Thank God it's you, Jim. I'm so glad you came. It's about time someone got here. Thank you for saving our station, Jim. I have called off the Romulan attack on this station, Kirk. I believed your virus was some kind of deliberate attack, but your great honor and compassion have convinced me otherwise. You also conducted yourself in the most honorable fashion, Centurion Priax. You may return to Romulan space without Federation interference. I assure you, the Federation would never undertake such a foul program. It was all an accident, right, Dr. Marcus? Save it for someone who's buying Priax. Leave Federation space immediately or we'll scatter your atoms across the quadrant. You also conducted yourself in the most honorable fashion since- You are an honorable adversary, Kirk. Jolon True. You are also a worthy opponent, Preax. May you live long and prosper. You'll never cease to amaze me, Jim. Goodbye, Carol. Goodbye, Jim. Well, gentlemen, let's go home. Message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. We have read your report on the problems at Arc 7 and evaluate your performance at 100%. You and your crew received four commendation points. A perfect mission, Jim. You are a model for all Starfleet. I wonder if I'll see Carol again. Well, if you don't, you can always drown your sorrow in some Romulan ale. That's illegal, Bones. Tell that to the Romulans, Jim. I found a whole case they brought on board, the Ark 7. It'll never replace Scotch, Captain. That it won't, Mr. Scott.